Station. I expect it only in Kribi tonight, while the rest of the region will be cloudy and cold. In the morning, Kribi and Ebolowa only will be experiencing showers. Ladies and gentlemen, weather is favorable for your tomato harvest. Have a good night. That was the weather forecast with the National Payment Switch Infrastructure, hash 237 hash. Whatever may be your activity, subscription or location, hash 237 hash is the code to send or receive money in Cameroon or abroad. Hash 237 hash, a free service offered by the state. The military tribunal in Boya has passed death sentences on perpetrators of the Kumba school massacre in 2020. Seven children died and a dozen of others were injured during the attack. The Chamber of Agriculture elects new regional delegates and a national executive to lead the new vision of the Chamber. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Mbairobi, will be our guest on the news. Plus, the volleyball lionesses of Cameroon have beaten all-time rivals Kenya three sets to zero in their opener at the African Women's Championship in Kigali. The men team play semi-final match against Morocco tomorrow. Good evening and welcome to the 7.30 News. I am Benin Bumagana. We must remain vigilant and mobilized, for this rapidly changing health crisis is still around. Together, we must resolutely continue the crucial phase of the fight against this virus through vaccination. Once again, good evening. The military tribunal in Boya has slammed death sentences on four perpetrators of the 2020 school massacre in Kumba that left seven children dead and dozens injured. They have 10 days to appeal. It is expected that the verdict will deter perpetrators of barbarism on innocent population of the northwest and southwest regions. Nueya Ben Modica with the reading of the court ruling. Memories of the Black Sack today, October the 24th, 2020, at the Mother Francisca International Bilingual Academy, Fiangokumba, are still fresh. Gunmen stormed the school, killing seven learners, wounding about a dozen others. This attracted condemnation from near and far, within and without Cameroon. The shock was chilling over the brutal end of children who only wanted to learn and become useful to themselves and the nation. Cameroon decreed a day of national mourning to lament and condemn the killing. Then, one day after school resumption for the 2021-2022 academic year, the Boya Military Court on September the 7th, 2021, thus what happened in Cameroon as far back as 24 years ago, slamming the four suspects' death sentences. To many, the message is unequivocal that laws are made by man for man and can be adapted by the same. Also, that the school environment should remain inviolate. That way, politicians should play their politics in a politically mature way, leaving out innocent children. This is also a strong message for the human life to be respected by everyone, everywhere, and in all situations. In the next write-up, Ibneza Akanga says this verdict, the death sentences, should send a strong message to those in the bushes and kidnappers who are torturing the population to either accept the head of state's offer for peace or face the same fate, his paper. Since the socio-political crisis broke out in the northwest and southwest regions, the head of state has taken several measures to resolve it peacefully. Not only have the claims that were made by lawyers and teachers' trade unions been satisfied entirely, but much more has been done. A major national dialogue was organized to find concerted solutions to the crisis. 
Above all, the head of state created a National Disarmament, Demobilization and Reintegration Committee, DDR, which he said provides an honorable way out to the fighters. A good number of ex-fighters have heeded the president's peace offer, laid down their arms and joined the DDR centers. But some are still in the bushes, continuing with atrocities and terrorism. The peace offer of the head of state is still open to them. They still have a chance to reconvert to normal life. Those who persist in terrorism will continue to face the full force of the defense and security forces. The courts will also continue to apply the law on those found guilty of committing atrocities and terrorism, just like the military court in Boya that has slammed a death sentence to the four found guilty of the Kumba school children killings. On to one of our lead stories. Vote counting is going on now after polls closed at 6 p.m. in the election of members and officials of the collegial bodies of the Chamber of Agriculture, Fisheries, Livestock and Forestry of Cameroon. The votes were supervised by the Minister of Agriculture, Gabriel Mbairobi, and the Governor of the Centre Region, Nasiri Paul Bia. Details with you, Annabella Tabi Nto. The voting exercise by registered farmers, fishermen, breeders and foresters began at 8 a.m. under the watchful supervision of the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development and the Governor of the Centre Region. The three lists which were validated are all there. The polling station started on time and uh, we are going to, when the polls close at 6 o'clock, follow up the counting and then the information forwarded to <clears throat> the Minister of uh, Agriculture, who is the national president in charge of this exercise. They are expected to make a choice from these three lists of members and officials of the collegial bodies of the Chamber of Agriculture, Fisheries, Livestock and Forestry of Cameroon. All votes are expected to be tallied once voting ends at 6 p.m. Sunday, September 12th at the Longkak, Kolbison and the Fulan polling stations in Yaoundé, like elsewhere in the country. Thank you very much, Annabella. And as we told you, the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Gabriel Barube, is in the studio uh, with us. Mr. Minister, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Benning Bobagano. Of course, you, you followed up with the uh, elections here in Gyaoundé. Uh, what, what, what remarks do you have? What did you include in your report? What did you notice? Uh, I followed up the election, not even in Yaoundé, but by video conference. I, I had an overview okay. in all the region in the Cameroon, and I'm satisfied with the uh, the turnout of the farmers to, to vote, it is encouraging. I'm very satisfied for the process. Matter of fact, it should have been quite a great expectation for the farmers because the last time there were elections, if our facts are clean, were in 2020, 2015. So they, they've been expecting these elections since 2020. Yes, that's true. Uh, you know that uh, the president of the republic reorganized the Chamber of uh, Agriculture uh, fishery, livestock, and forest on uh, 2014. And since then, the uh, farmers were waiting for the election of the members and the college's bo body of the Chamber of Agriculture. But uh, things uh, last year, we tried to uh, organize this uh, election, but it's not possible because the last president died okay. and he had to wait for the uh, appointment, a new president. That's why we organized this election this year. Uh, the process began on March when we, the, the con with the convening of the electoral body mm -hmm. and then the publication of the list of uh, candidates on uh, August and now uh, today, the 12th of September, is the day of voting. So after the votes, uh, vote counting is going on, we we'll definitely will get the results maybe in the days ahead. After the, what next? After this, what next? What next? Uh, uh, you know, the regional commission have to publish the or to forward the results uh, at last on the 17th of September. Okay. 
on the 21st of September, we have to publish the uh, election results. And then we'll wait for uh, any contestation uh, to be taken place. Uh, after the contestation, the new chamber will be installed at least on the 3rd or the 4th of October. Oh, quite quite clear program but i can't let you i can't let you go mr minister a lot of persons including me uh the question is what's the role of the chamber of agriculture as a matter of fact how can the farmers or how are the farmers really benefiting from the chamber of agriculture you know the main role of the chamber is to defend to defend the interests of uh, uh, agriculture mm -hmm. of uh, fishermen of breeders and of forest operators. Okay. And the chamber is in charge of uh, vocational training of the farmers, and uh, they have the role to uh, promoting the made in Cameroon and the products uh, issued from the farmers, the fishery or uh, from forest. So as a matter of fact, the farmers have everything to hold on to uh, from the chamber of uh, agriculture. Yes, yes. We are expecting more than the Chamber of uh, Agriculture. And please uh, let me take uh, advantage of this situation to thank the Ministry of uh, Territorial Administrative who, who were very involved in the process. I will thank the Ministry of Communication okay. uh, through what uh, people have all the information about the election. I will thank uh, ELECAM and the Minister of Justice, and the other ministers who accompany us on this process. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Benny Bubagana, and we, and we wish this I, opportunity. And we wish you the best uh, in the days ahead with the projects ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Well, yes, you stay with us this time. Let's talk some politics. The 8th Ordinary Congress of the Union of the People of Cameroon, UPC, has ended with the adoption of amendments and far-reaching recommendations to unite, re-dynamize the party and make it more competitive nationwide. The National Bureau is headed by Dr. Pierre Baligel Nkot, a Secretary General. We hear in this report by Nuea Ben Modika. From this Congress of Peace, Unity and Reconciliation, the delegates are going back with the earnest hope and commitment that the new dawn would take their party from the backstages to the top. We want to inject a new blood in the party because this party, as history holds, is uh, 73 years old as of now. And because of the squabbles that have been haunting this party, it cannot progress. We have known UPC of being a party that accompanies other parties, political parties, like the regime in place. But today we have decided to take the bull by the horn. So we have decided to be a party that is going for the quest for power. To this effect, the new team has promised never to betray their confidence and trusted in them. The way we have uh, organized our, the new bureau is a decentralized bureau. So the people will join the, the structure in the regions. It is a process. The reconciliation is a process. Now we are putting in place a committee of reconciliation. Closing the Congress, the Secretary General praised the delegates and all other stakeholders for their support and maturity, lauding their sympathizers for respecting democratic values even in diversity. He called for patience, hard work, and determination. In The Vice President of the World Bank for Central and West Africa, Usman Diagana, is in Cameroon and will be received in audience tomorrow Monday by the Minister of the Economy, Alamin Usman May. Usman Diagana is expected to sign four conventions with the Cameroon government within the week. Luma Slim Davies with details. As coordinator of relations between the World Bank and 22 partner countries, who manages a portfolio? of projects, overseas technical assistance and financial resources to the tune of $40 billion, the presence of the World Bank Vice President for Central and West Africa, Usman Diagana, in Cameroon is strategic and of high economic importance. With a strong attachment to the World Bank, smart countries enjoy support on program investment, budgetary as well as services advice and technical assistance. 
It is therefore uncoincidental that Usman Diagana is visiting just after the extraordinary summit of the CIMAC heads of state. Worthy of note is that the World Bank has just finalized a strategy for West and Central Africa to establish a new social contract between the state and the citizenry. This aims at opening up quality employment, reinforce human capital, and improve climatic resilience. Cameroon is poised to increase annual cocoa production to 3 million tons beginning the season. Sodekao and Padija project are partnering to train youths and members of corporate unions on techniques of good cocoa cultivation. Beatrice Ngom tells us more. A mission to the hinterlands of Mesamena, precisely to the locality of Tesang. The director general of Sodekao, accompanied by collaborators and elites of the area, are visiting an 11-hectare cocoa farm created by Padija. It has taken technicians on the field 10 months to plant 12,000 plants of cocoa and 12,000 plants of plantain suckers instead of the initial 15 months. This partnership has as goal to relaunch cocoa farming in Mesamena and get youths interested in cocoa cultivation. We have chosen Sodekao to accompany us in this project. It can help the Hoya economy emerge. Cote d'Ivoire is talking of 2,300,000 tons. With our feta soil, we are projecting a production of 2 to 3 million tons annually. Padija and Sodekao are training and empowering farmers' cooperatives in Mesamena on how to manage their farms for better yields and on how to tackle seed shortage. We will produce our own cocoa plant and that will help respond to producers' need, help in creating new plantations and in regenerating old ones as well. Farmers equally received farm equipment to enable them start new cocoa farms or rehabilitate the aging ones. Newly installed officials at the Eglise Evangelique du Cameroon Brigitteri 2 in Yaoundé have taken commitment to serve the people. While we prepare to get to that story, let us hear that 62 schools in Sang Melima have received didactic materials and school stationaries worth over 12 million CFA francs from the CPDM Member of Parliament for the Ja and Lobo Honorable Germain Maturin Bindua. The donation is part of the parliamentarian's pledge to support the education community at the start of the 2021-2022 school year. Esther Kima has the details. In time that saves nine for the 62 rural schools in Sang Melima who endure need of assistance, the elected representative comes to alleviate the plight. Honorable Germain Mathurin Bindua, true to his promise to foster development and to step up the quality of education in his community, gives out items to the tune of 12.5 million CFA francs. The prefect for Ja and Lobo, Daniel Owuno, applauds the move which abets government's education policy and which leaves the education family appreciative. He has begun to do it last year. The quality of the material he has given to us, the numbers of the school, San Melima, has uh, 69 rural schools. We just say to him, thank you very much. The legislator, Honorable Germain Mathurin Bindoua, pledges to stand up for academic excellence till the Jar and Lobo obtains an enviable place in the country's honor roll. Africa needs broad and equitable access to the vaccine. Indeed, how can we achieve herd immunity with less than 5% of our citizens currently vaccinated? Now let's flip over to talk about uh, this fight against COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we go to Kigali, Rwanda, where Baldwin Sama engages his guest, Dr. Charles Nkuruziza, on the sustained measures against COVID-19, saying that no player has yet been tested positive. Hello, Baldwin. 
Good evening to you, Benin Bumaga. Now, it happens to be one of the reasons why no confirmed case of COVID-19 has been detected in any of the delegations so far, because all of them have been observing the bubble system where they are not allowed to get in contact with the outside world throughout their stay here in Kigali. Let's find out how it happens in their respective hotels with our guest tonight, Dr. Charles Nkuzinza, who is the anti-COVID-19 uh, surveillance uh, coordinator here in Kigali. Good evening to you, doctor. Good evening. Well, when we talk about the baboon system, the different hotels for the players, how is it observed? Uh, thank you. The baboon system, uh, we instruct uh, the delegation members uh, to keep their mask, to wash their hands regularly, and to keep social distancing. So they have to remain in their respective hotels, and uh, they only go out during uh, uh, the training or during the, the matches. Otherwise, they don't have uh, the authorization to go outside that uh, bubble system. And the fact that people have to be tested in after every two days, many people are asking themselves if it's not too much. So uh, it's not too much because uh, we have to, uh, to make a system that will allow us to detect any new infection very early in order to prevent to contaminate others. So it is being done and uh, everyone is complying and uh, up to now we think uh, everything is going okay. Thank you so much Dr. Charles Kogoziza who is uh, the Heart Anti-COVID-19 Surveillance Coordinator during this Men's African Volleyball Championship. The Babu system has been quite successful so far because even us covering this competition for CRTV as Cameroonians, we cannot visit the Volleyball Lions or the Volleyball Lionesses in their hotel because of the Babu system. We can only meet them during the training sessions or during their matches here at the Kigali Arena. Back to you, Benin Bumagana. Great measures, Baldwin, Samaf and Cayman. The National Anti-Corruption Commission, CUNAC, has uncovered several cases of fraud in schools in Yaoundé, with some of them caught flagrant delito. This is the outcome of a pre-resumption school campaign to stop corruption said to be endemic in the education sector in the country. That killer reports. The son of this physically challenged spent a whole year at government high school. Memberman Yaoundé with no trace on the school list. What made me report to Konak is because I didn't see any report card. When you look at this registration receipt, it makes you think that the child was duly registered. He wrote the probatoire final year examination under the name of an ex-student known to the school administration. As were in government technical high school Swastil in Yaoundé, unauthorized collection of money for sportswear. It is prohibited by the secular of the Minister of Secondary Education. We are on the field with experts from the Ministry of Trade and the Ministry of Secondary Education to verify whether this information is true or false. 635,000 ceased is being refunded to the parents. Complaints from government primary school bastos in Yaoundé are startling about management of PTA funds. They are accusing the head teacher of giving them 15,000 but obliging them to sign 30. The National Anti-Corruption Commission Conak is out for war against corrupt administrations. We have a big strategy and we began by doing it uh, from the primary school to secondary school to university. Conak's toll free number is 1517. On to our guest of the week tonight. She's Cameroonian singer Daniela Ahanda, well known for her role as backup singer for many artists. She's one of the young Cameroonians to have taken part in the African award dubbed The Voice Afrique Francophone. Victor Siga met the singer and put together this report for the news. Pour la santé de ma vie, c'est sûr que c'est toi que je veux. Passion for what is her hobby. Music leads her where she had wished to be. Daniela Ahanda began her career as a chorister and today valuably represents Cameroon. Worldwide, thanks to her talent. I started music uh, in uh, Senegal as a 
chorist and uh, I did chorus for many artists. It all started with her participation at the first edition of The Voice Africa and later a single, Je veux me poser. As time unfolded, her hard work and enthusiasm made the dream come true. Daniela Ahanda, still at her debut, is confident the voyage is just starting with more projects in the pipeline. She nurses the dream of becoming a support to most young talented Cameroonian artists still in the shadows. The Cameroonian diva, Daniela Ahanda, only the sky will be her limit. Congratulations. Let's go quickly to the West region where a borehole has been constructed and offered to the population of Keng Banjun in the Pumge subdivision of the Kunki division. The gesture is that of the CPD member of parliament for the Kunki, Honorable oh. Albert Quinche. Chancellor Nanze reports. The liquid of life now flows in quantity and quality in King Banjun, a campaign promise fulfilled by the CPDM Member of Parliament for the Kunki, Honorable Albert Quinche, who has constructed a modern borehole and donated to the population that sent him to Parliament. This population, and especially the CPDM militant, have realized a good score. So it was normal that I realize this social project to this population. The borehole was inaugurated by the... The last set was easier for Cameroon that simply corrected Kenyan errors to win the set 25-19. That of satisfaction, we know that uh, coming into a competition uh, is not really easy. But the performance that our team had today, we came here with the ambition of playing each game and to try to move up each step one after another, not to jump two, two steps at a time. We we'll finished the first game today and we are really going to remain uh, focused for the next game that we're going to have tomorrow. The volleyball lionesses will play their second group match this Monday against Tunisia. And this Monday, Baldwin Summer, the volleyball lions will face Morocco for their semi final game. Time 1 p.m. In other sports story, we spotlight Luis Tazo, an under 23 Alliance defender who has joined Cotton Sport of Garoa from RS Fortuna. Let us hear more about him from this in this report with Daniel Ekonde. 21 year old Luis Tazo is gearing up for his first ever continental appearance with Cameroon's biggest club, Cotton Sport. The Santa native signed for Cotton recently from RS Fortuna and will be contesting the CAF Confederation Cup this year. I like to have titles because Cotton Sport is a great team, it's a big team, it's a place to be. So I'm very excited about going to Cotton Sport. The left back played 16 out of Fortuna's 20 games this season, an achievement he truly worked for. Uh, I prepared this year very hard. I prepared this year very hard because I was playing this year like uh, it's my last season to play football. So that's why I was lucky to be selected to go to Cotton Sport. Having played for Elite One Champions PWD Bamenda from 2015 to 2018, Tazo has a big ambition. My ambition is to train again harder and travel to Europe. Tazo has had stints with the under-23 Lions, playing for them in 2018, 2019 and 2020. On that note, we come to the end of the 7.30 news. Atta Bajinoma will come back here at 8.30 p.m. for the news in French. Tomorrow at 7.30 p.m., you will meet Ben Menopoufong. And at 8.30 p.m., Adembala Albi. As part of efforts to combat COVID-19 in particular, we must consolidate the gains already achieved and intensify mobilization for the ongoing vaccination campaigns in our countries.
problème à cause. On fait comment pour avoir la bonne information sur le Covid-19 Je ne connais pas où. Il suffit d'appeler le numéro vert le 1510 gratuitement et vous aurez la bonne information sur les symptômes de la maladie, les sites de